Hey everyone, what we're gonna talk about today is five things that are not good for OCD sufferers. This is when OCD sufferers are talking between themselves, when people are giving advice to OCD sufferers. These are five things that hold people back, false realities, improper information. Before I go any further, please subscribe, hit that like button, comment down below. Let me know if you didn't know any of these. Let me know if there's other things that you think should be added to this list. Uh, this doesn't encompass all of them, but these are five things I see frequently on social media that I think are unfortunately poor advice. So again, if you're interested in coaching or webinar services, please email info at ocdrecovery.com and we will get back to you in a timely fashion. The first thing I wanna talk about, which I made a video today, a reel for, for my Instagram, that's linked to OCD Recovery, which is a guy who hikes, is the tone of voice that people are speaking to people. Now, one of the, my favorite people who I was introduced to by Rob, I heard the name in passing was Ray Dalio, who owns a big company called Bridgewater. And I just got done reading his book, Principles. And one of the principles in his book is tough love is the hardest love, but it's the most important type of love. There is no room in OCD and anxiety recovery for only compassion and empathy. Compassion and empathy are so important, but if that's your only tactic, the person's not gonna get far. My wife had to yell at me, even though she knew she couldn't change me, but she had to instill tough love on me because I was stubborn, excuse me, I was arrogant in my actions because of how bad I was suffering, ooh, excuse me, which is totally understandable. But when we talk to people, welcome, it's so good to have you, and they talk to you in this baby, you're not a baby, you're an adult. You are an adult who needs to take full responsibility for your OCD recovery. Jim Rohn, Tony Robbins' mentor, favorite quote, the number one sign of human maturity is personal responsibility. Of course, having OCD is unpleasant. Of course, suffering is tough. Of course, changing symptoms are tough, changing themes. That's all tough. Life events, but unfortunately, life just fucking happens. And the tough love approach has extreme applicability. If it wasn't tough love, if there wasn't tough love mixed in with empathy and compassion, nobody would recover. No one will recover because it's a hard journey. It's a really hard journey. So the tone of voice that we talk to people Varying the tone, understanding when compassion and empathy is key, understanding people skills. I'm constantly working on my people skills. And I could tell you right now that the constant compassion and empathy, and that's all that you have, that's the only tool in your toolbox, kind of demean, it's almost demeaning to people when you're like, oh yeah, it's gonna be okay. It's not gonna be okay. Not at all. Oh my God, do you see this fog coming in? Are you seeing this? Dude, I can barely see across the street. It's crazy. It's crazy out here. That's why I got my, my Maverick, my Top Gun, Thing on that got made fun of in the WhatsApp groups. The second thing I want to talk about is not accepting the benefits of acceptance, okay? Or not recognizing, that sounds better, not recognizing the benefits of acceptance. Unconditional self-life and other acceptance is the most important thing when it comes to OCD recovery, the end. It doesn't mean it's the only thing, but it's, a, it's the pin pit prick to the engine of OCD. OCD is driven by fear. Those fears are instilled, which makes it feel a zero to 100. If you wanna see me do a video on breaking down what OCD is, like an actual informative history video, let me know. I haven't done one in almost 18 months. If you wanna see me do that, comment down below and I'll talk about what, what is OCD, a very long video with the whiteboards. So we know that acceptance is the key because we've seen it with thousands of people who come to us and say, I've only been exposures. And then we look at how they're doing it and they're forcing exposures. Oh, I have to have another exposure to do. No, you don't. You have to live three, six months with three to six months at this particular recommendation and just getting your lifestyle factors up, bringing the compulsions, the avoidance down. The fear drives the cycle. The compulsions and the engine are the gasoline to the engine. The engine is fear. The fuel is compulsions and avoidance behaviors, reassurance, seeking, etc. That engine will run, will continue to run until the compulsions and avoidance behaviors come down and we change our belief systems. That's what, so you take the, 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 imagine a car that's an idol. You take out the compulsions, you take out the avoidance and the reassurance and the car is rolling down a hill and you're like, well, I have no compulsions and avoidance behaviors. Why is it still stuck? The way to get the car to stop, to get the cycle to stop, is changing your belief systems. That is key. If you've heard me talk about my diabetes example, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a video that said 10, I'll make it 10 ways to look at OCD from like practical examples. I, I, I like those. I think they're easy to conceptualize. So that's number two. 
The third thing I wanna talk about is OCD guidelines. Nonsense, nonsense. Uh, do people see, re see relief from the way they feel in a semi-short period of time? Sure. Do most? Absolutely not. Most people's OCDs are morphing and changing, going zero to 100, six, nine months, 12 months in, 18 months in, even during long periods of feeling good. I see stuff where people say, oh, you know, 10 to 12 uh, sessions of, of some sort of therapy, you should have acceptance down. That's not how acceptance works. Acceptance is, this is acceptance. I'll give you an example. I am currently sitting outside and it's cold and it's so foggy that you barely see across the street. There's precipitation everywhere. Um, it's a little bit windy. That's it. That's it. That's not whether I like it or not. It's just what is going on at this point in time with the weather in my life. Acceptance is that. It's not a doing, it's a being. And it's a simple misunderstanding that gets portrayed incorrectly all the time, all the time, a lot. So if anyone is giving you these strong guidelines, I've even heard if you haven't recovered in a year, you're getting the wrong uh, help. If you if you're not doing exposures, you're getting the wrong help. If you're not working on recovery all day long, 24 hours a day, you're getting the wrong help. We have to highlight the facts. 99.9% .9 of people that work with OCD do not understand it. They outside the superficial standpoint. It's not because they're malicious. It's not because they're trying to harm you. It's because experience in OCD is, in my opinion, the most important part. This doesn't mean we can't work together, but being open-minded on things that we see, oh, you do this, I do that, oh, I don't really see that, you don't really see that, but when I see continual information that's incorrect, I'm gonna call it out, because it is important to the sufferer, because I know what it's like to be stuck for years and not make any improvement. That's number three. Number four, the false reality of the journey, which ties into the OCD, the third part, the guidelines. But then this one, what do I mean by the false realities of the journey? The false realities of the journey is this, not highlighting that themes will probably change, not highlighting that you'll die, doubt everything, not highlighting that it's gonna try and intrude on weddings, birthday parties, vacations, intimate moments, new relationships, new jobs, anything lifestyle, convincing you in a zero to 100 pattern that you have not made any progress. No, almost nobody talks about that. The zero to 100 urges, the urge to complete a compulsion, the urge to complete an avoidance behavior. So many people are missing that, and that is so detrimental to our recovery process because half of the journey, we'll just say half practicality, is learning about how OCD works. Oh, this is what Nick and Rob and other moderators were talking about. This is what they mean by the changing of the symptoms, et cetera, et cetera. That is so key. If we don't look at the practicality of OCD, it makes it very difficult to recover from OCD because we don't understand, oh, yeah, I guess, you know, there is no themes that are off limit. Yeah, it does make sense. It's trying to pop up on my wedding day right now. And remember, agreement doesn't mean acceptance. So that's number four. So let's recap again. Ready? Tone of voice. Not recognizing the benefits of acceptance. OCD recovery guidelines and false sense of reality. And the fifth one I want to talk about is go back and watch my recent video from probably three, four days ago on how I do my morning routines. And that is lifestyle factors. Now, what do we mean by lifestyle factor? First of all, what are the benefits of a lifestyle factor? Like, what are the benefits of that? What's the benefits of going to the gym, practicing balance and moderation, practicing resistance and, and, and poise? What is the, the benefits of, of practicing uh, strong held consistency without looking to feel a certain way? It's because that's how you wear anxiety like an uncomfortable coat. I'm going to break down something to you quite frank. Life is not about being happy. No matter what anyone thinks, there's plenty of hardships in life and trying to catch happiness is like trying to catch love. It's like trying to catch smoke with your hands. It's not how life is supposed to work. Life, as Marcus Aurelius said in meditations, is just life. This is why stoicism is the foundation, is the glue of rational thinking of Ellis's principles. It's why we practice these principles, to realize that we don't have to feel a certain way. We can accept ourselves when we get a little bit worked up. We can reorganize and reassess, not in an OCD sense, and redirect our attention. We can persist through. We can break down the barriers. I use an example of most humans are standing in a field, and they're standing in a field with all other humans, and there's dominoes. And those dominoes are societal beliefs, religious beliefs, monetary beliefs, doctrines, fears, and most people are so scared to move, so they just mold into another domino, where I, because of the practice, I'm standing in that same field, but my dominoes are knocked down. And I can walk past them and see, oh, 
That's why that person would think about that in a religious context. Oh, this is why someone with harm OCD might think like that. It's not that the dominoes are disappeared. I know this, the dominoes, but I can move around them because I have unconditional self-life acceptance, other self-life, unconditional self-life and other acceptance. Not perfectly because I'm not no stoic. I'm not a Buddhist monk. And I do think it's a lifelong journey and I've come off the horse here and there and my, um, you know, I might get a little bit more frustrated with some people, but even Ellis in his book, R.A.B.T. It Worked For Me, It Can Work For You Too, that was the autobiography he wrote in 2003, four years before he died, even talked about even then, at 89 years old, he still had to practice unconditional other acceptance more than unconditional self-acceptance. I think for me, that's probably a, um, uh, uh, very, uh, there's a correlation with the way how I was, probably because I was raised with a lot of yelling and the Italian, hey, you doing? You know, in my family, it very much was, you know, some people, hey, you, you want to go to the store? It's say, like, hey, you want to go to the fucking store? <laughs> you know, and it didn't mean anything by it, but that just was that conditioning that I had. Notice how I don't spend a lot of time in the past. I acknowledge it, work on my beliefs now, and change. And there's a sixth. I want to add a bonus sixth that I don't have written down. And that is, Stop focusing on the past. And I mean stop focusing on trauma. People will go through things in life. Consistently playing the victim mentality doesn't do anything. I did it all the time. You don't understand, babe. This is so bad. My life. And then Erica said, do you want me to have OCD? Is that what you want? Then I realized, oh, that wouldn't make any sense. And that wouldn't be a good solution. Yeah, things, people go through really hard things. You know, different types of uh, tyranny and dictatorships and famines and economic disasters and uh, f uh, financial problems and marital, marital problems and children passing away and losing loved ones. That is all part of life. It's part of life. There are no rules in life what sh something should or should not happen. If that was the truth, Auschwitz wouldn't have happened. If that's the truth, World War II wouldn't have happened where 1% of the world population, 1% of the world population was killed. 1%, not of the US, of the world. Genghis Khan's reign wouldn't have happened. Famine in Rome wouldn't have happened. Educating yourself on history is key to understanding gratitude. I was a little bit more hyped up in this video um, just because I, I these are topics that I see incorrectly explained a lot, which is unfortunate. Um, and every once in a while, you know, Rob and I come on here and we get in a little bit more of a, you know, matter of fact type of mood because we think it's important. Now, don't get us wrong. Compassion and empathy is key. When we talk, everyone that knows, when we do one-to-one -one coaching, when we do webinars, we are joking. We are laughing. We are compassionate. We are empathetic. I am listening to you when you're talking um, uh, in our calls. But it is important to realize that I'm going to give you tough love. I'm not like most people in that regard. I see the benefit in that. Whether you agree with that or not is is okay. You know, we can disagree on that. It's not always about agreeing. If we all agree with each other, we'd be like robots. It would just be not good. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Again, comment down below. Go back to recap. Info at OCDrecovery.com. And let me know about some other videos like this that you want to see. Do you like seeing more videos on education where I'm using exercises in the book? Do you like seeing, you know, top 10 biggest myths? Um, you know, those are the ones that really marketing wise, you know, five things to not do. You let me know what you like and we'll go from there. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, have a great day.